What's up, Husky Dogs? This is your friend Mark. Welcome to Muffed Movies. This is the second half of Muffed Movies, The Phantom Menace Live, uh, the thrilling conclusion featuring Dave Stecco. Before we get started, I wanted to say a couple things. Number one, thank you so much to our new patron, Jennifer Fueling, who signed up at the scientist level. Thank you to everybody who supports this show, um, you know, shares it with their friends, posts about it on social supports it financially on patreon um go see the live show it 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 is all significant to me i really appreciate it um if you want to support the show uh substantively and not emotionally <laughs> then consider becoming a patron um we got cool and unique rewards such as uh a muffing of et with andy north that has never been released to the public Ooh. uh so exclusive you guys so exclusive okay um now you're gonna notice that this episode uh is a little short um so i decided to give you all a special holiday treat uh so keep listening after muffed movies concludes because I have recorded the first ever Muffed Movies Pretty Good Awards. Uh, it's a walk down memory lane on uh, old Muffed Movies uh, moments that were special or hilarious to me, um, starting in 2014. So pretty, pretty long range of time. Um, if you're new to Muffed Movies and you, you stick in there long enough to uh, finish the episode, uh, this is also a great kind of sampler of episodes to visit. Um, that I think are particularly funny. So uh, I hope you all enjoy that. Uh, and finally, in March, I'm going to be doing another Muff Movies live episode. We're going to be muffing Dune, um, kind of, you know, in collaboration with uh, uh, the part two of the Dune movie coming out in theaters. Um, that's going to be at Otherworld Theater in Chicago, first weekend of March. So put it on your calendars. I don't have the exact day of the weekend nailed down yet but as soon as i do i will post about that on social and uh, i'll plug it on muff movies um thank you everybody so much for listening have a wonderful holiday and enjoy the show Ow! husky dog smash cut to <laughs> the dusty trail on the back uh, the way back to queen amidala's ship for some reason we smash cut back in and qui-gon's fucking hoofing it fucking it and it can fucking move qui-gon's just running as fast as he can uh, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute there buster uh, uh, my little legs can't keep up with you i'm only one and a half years old i was told you run the 40 in 4.4 seconds yeah when i've got a, a scooby snack ahead of me to motivate me <laughs> When suddenly, from the straight out, the clouds themselves drops an evil, dark, red-faced, horned-headed figure. Oh my god, the most exciting thing in the trailer before we actually saw the movie. It is none other than the evil Sith apprentice, Darth Maul. Yes, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Played by Oscar Isaac. Um... Who uh, 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 says so little in this movie, it makes me feel bad. So let's give Darth Maul a voice for once. Voice choice. What's Darth Maul's voice? Christopher Rocket. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 what have we here? <laughs> Two little piggies in the desert. <laughs> Somehow Darth Maul does not know the grab the ship move that we see Ray do later on. Um, uh, spoilers. <clears throat> and... What? Why earthwor <laughs> earthworm Jin and his his little his wee little baby escape into the mirror cruiser? Smash cut to Coruscant, the government planet, city on the grow. Hardworking Coruscant citizens buzzling back and forth. <laughs> Lots of pol politics to get done. That's right. Everywhere on the planet is a city. I don't know how they have an ecosystem, but it's the way it is. We see some 1930s guys taking their lunch on a girder 75,000 feet above the upper level. There's the lower level and then the under city. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> yes, we have no time to get into this, so... We smash cut straight into the Jedi Council Chamber, where we see some familiar faces. It's Master Yoda. Remember him? We were excited back then, because this is before Grogu existed. <laughs> and also that famous master, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> no, 
traditionally known throughout the world as famous for his calm, meditative demeanor. <laughs> Just like a Jedi. Uh, masters, I have brought this one-year-old child uh, in front of you because he is a virgin in the Force. I believe he needs to be trained. Do I have the Council's approval? Oh, I want to say no. Is that cool? Okay. Council? Anybody else in the council? Biff Bagoggin, the long-necked master, says no. <laughs> Let me just defer straight to Yoda, the leader of the council, because I don't care about most of you. Master Yoda, please, can I train this boy? Uh, normally fine with it, I would be, but to uh, have a Padawan you already do, so... Oh, not this? <laughs> Qui-Gon pushes Obi-Wan Kenobi out the window. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> He'll be fine. Um, he's old enough to take the test. He's, a, he's basically a master. I have nothing more to teach him. I mean, <laughs> I just really like this boy. Just give me the point. <laughs> so shall it be it be, <laughs> says Yoda. My vote being that you can yes to have them. Nice! Qui-Gon high-fives the little Anakin's tiny little baby hand. <clears throat> this is bullshit, is heard by normally sedate Master Windu as they leave the room. I want these motherfucking <laughs> Sith! <laughs> <clears throat> Smash cut to... Um, uh, hey, let's just cut straight to the government uh, senate. The Senate of the future is so exciting because it's filled with donut chair ships and all the uh, politicians sit together and when they want to talk, they voosh out straight into the middle of empty dead space. And they have video technology. They don't need to do this. But anyway, this is Queen Amidala's moment. This is why she came to Kuruskant. She zooms out there with her dear, faithful trustworthy advisor, Senator Palpatine. He's just so trustworthy. I am going to give you advice, my queen. <laughs> if the chancellor disagrees with us, you must fire him by saying he has no confidence or something. <laughs> it's, we're saying this by memory, so... <laughs> But the Chancellor's our very best friend in the whole wide world. That, that would be whack. It would be whack. But sometimes in politics you must be whack to get your payback. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> the Chancellor zoops out to Queen Amidala. Queen Amidala, you have the floor. My fellow Coruscantians, uh... <sighs> This is bullshit. <laughs> this is absolute bullshit, says the Nemoidian delegation from the Trade Federation, who just like Mario Kart, the Queen's <laughs> Senate pod, straight into the wall. And she spins out, and a, a Latiku, L Lakitu, has to fish her out of the Rainbow Road. <laughs> nice. Sorry, Mario Kart fans. Uh, this is uh, absurd. Uh, we need uh, proof. She is hurling grievous allegations at us. Uh, we did not try to kill any Jedi, and our blockade is completely legal. Um, uh, she's, she's being prejudiced against uh, green aliens that don't have pupils. I apologize that on my trip through space on a faster-than-light ship, I didn't have any photos of the enormous army that was landed on my planet. But you gotta believe me. Uh, and if you don't back me, you're probably, I hate to say it, Whack. Sen <laughs> Senator Palpatine whispers into the Queen's ear, this is where the bureaucrats will do things that are bad. And we see a tentacle head guy looking real barrister-like, like with the long <laughs> English curls. Uh, uh, the Chancellor looks at him, shrugs, and says... Um, the Chancellor says that uh, the Nemoidians are right, and uh, we need to debate this before taking any action. Mm, so, uh, we're not going to help Naboo right now. I'd like to second the motion that we move to vote to clear censure to create a community of voting bodies that would then investigate whether or not there's something we should be Hi, doing Hi, Queen Amidala here. Can a woman talk? Oh, snap! <laughs> now the awkward thing is that blue alien was a woman. It just <laughs> looks very masculine. 
Uh, she don't care. Anyway. It's a microaggression. I do not have time to listen to you debate in the Senate. My people are dying, and if you don't do something, then I think you should fire this whack-ass chancellor. Whack! 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 The whack, whole room whack, takes it up. Whack! 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 whack, whack. whack. <laughs> oh, oh, no. The chancellor is so spiritually devastated, he crumbles and crum- crunkles down into a carbuncle. <laughs> the power is cut to his floating disc, and he just plummets to his death. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, hey, I think we should elect uh, Senator Palpatine as the chancellor, <laughs> says Senator Palpatine's hand puppet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, it's quite an honor. We'll see uh, due process no, and whatnot. I think it should be Palpatine, says his other hand puppet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose if it's unanimous. <laughs> oh, I think that Senator Palpatine's got some good ideas, says another hand puppet controlled by the force. Oh. <laughs> You can't learn that from a Jedi. <laughs> uh, I was Alec Guinness and <laughs> Palpatine for a minute. Um, smash cut to Naboo, baby. Let's get back to Naboo to defeat... Thank you. <laughs> One tiny The Hunts from the back. Not a lot of Mulan, Mulan fans in the audience, I see. Y'all need to watch Mulan. Y'all, y'all like Mulan? <laughs> it's one about that girl dress up. Anyway. She's, she's kicking ass. I, I, honestly, I found it empowering. Speaking of kicking ass, I was going to cut this scene, but we have 17 minutes left, so let's luxuriate. Ooh. <clears throat> the Gungans had a secret army all along. No wonder the Nabooleans were... Suspicious of them. Uh, the Gungans have a grand army of um, funny little bouncy ball balloons and they were dino riders all along. <laughs> yes, dinosaurs that look uncannily Gungan, which makes me wonder, as I posited over lunch earlier, are the Gungans riding like the previous evolution of their own species into battle? Is it like us riding gorillas into war? Which I said, if you could ride a gorilla into war, it is the only thing we would ride into war. Yeah. There wouldn't even be tanks. Just better and better gorillas. Out Hannibal Hannibal. (sighs) I'm talking about the historical one. Come on, people. (laughs) Uh, the Gungans erect a shield. Awesome plan. And the robots advance. The robots pass through the shield and kill the Gungans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We must tweet. <laughs> Jaja, this is looking bad. Yes, I didn't do it. Uh, I'm a robot. Beep, boop, beep. <laughs> <laughs> but the robots aren't buying it, and they take the Gungan leadership uh, under gun yeah. time. Which one of you is General Jar Jar? That would be me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he was given the rank of general. They made him a bombad general. So I feel like in Star Wars, general just means not specific. <laughs> <laughs> it's not actually a military rank. <laughs> what do you do? Oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> Anyway, Gungans are getting pasted, as we learned. Um, <coughs> smash cut. Queen Amadala shows up in the hangar. Once again, the hangar. Oh, the hangar. Ah, uh, mm, oh, yes, the hangar. Uh, and once again, they just fuck up droids. <laughs> Kill them, boys, she says. And those hangars, nothing but air vents. You, you don't know where he's coming from. It could be anywhere. <laughs> They're in the fucking walls, man. The droids are freaking... Brrr, brrr. The droids are flipping out, and Qui-Gon, he isn't even using his lightsaber. He's just, uh, uh, like, just hand crush, destroying heads. He's twisting necks. He's, like, biting through the midriff of these little Roger Roger droids. Drinking the goo. Jesus Christ, says Obi-Wan, who's walking with uh, two broken legs. Because <laughs> remember, he's throwing out a window on Coruscant. That's canon. <clears throat> Uh, good. Now our spaceship pilots will be able to get into outer space and shoot the blockade like we wanted to all along. Screw the law. Um, Anakin, remember him? The five-month-old hides. This is a wildly dangerous place for a child to be. Can we put him inside that war machine until this is over? 
Uh, yes, uh, it's not designed for a, an infant, but sure, I suppose it's safe enough. We'll just lock it from the outside. Blip, blip. Good idea. <laughs> so, yeah, so they stuff the baby into the cockpit, who immediately mistakes the autopilot toggle for a pacifier and starts <laughs> sucking it, activating the Naboo Death Fighter. It blasts out into space. <laughs> Creeping death. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's the old callback. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, whippy or some shit, says Anakin, <laughs> as he leaves the plot for a bit. This is the most fun I've ever had in my, my, my whole life. <laughs> yep, yep, any dude or some chip shit. <laughs> oh, Mary! Mary! <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get up there and I'm going I'm to throw a rope around that Trade Federation droid ship and bring it right back down here for you is what I'm going to do. I love that that's an It's a Wonderful Life <laughs> reference in the middle of the Star Wars podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> I will cut me being an idiot and will make it sound like I knew it. <laughs> That's the well ma- done, Mark. The magic of not live theater. Um, <coughs> yeah, but oh, hold on to your butts because here's the fucking part that is worth it. Not not worth watching the whole thing, but this is the <laughs> cool part. It's worth t- it's worth a discussion. We we'll talk hear about it. John Williams playing his flugelhorn in the background. <laughs> The Dumbledores open, <laughs> revealing none other than Darth Maul. The <gasps> second most Darth son of a bitch you've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> I told you once, you son of a bitch. I'm the <laughs> Darth that's ever been. <laughs> oh, Darth Maul ignites his lightsaber. Uh-oh, it's red. That's a bad sign. And then bzz, another one comes out of its cloaca. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this was mind-blowing to Star Wars fans in the year 1996. Sure. A bow staff lightsaber. Ah! I saw the greatest minds of my generation melted by this moment (laughs) of cinema. But Obi Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jim are like... (laughs) Rick and old Qui-Gon Jim's gonna have to take care of you. Hold my beer. And... They just force push all the good guys out of there, and they engage in lightsaber snuggles. They're just... (laughs) This will go on for about ten minutes, so if you need to go to the bathroom... (laughs) (laughs) Can't get me! (laughs) How about you? Um, Yeah, there you are, fighting everybody. Was kung fu fighting. (laughs) Everybody. (laughs) Um... And they they take the fight on the road. They're like, this place is dead, y'all. Let's go somewhere cool. <laughs> to the club. Boots, 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 boots. The club generator. Smash cut. To the power generator or whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> they fight. Not great. Um, so, so intensely that the movie itself is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we just take a second here? Yeah. Whew, this is hot. Guys, guys, guys. Hot. Girls, girls, girls. <laughs> hot action. And suddenly the uh, power generator's AI ref just some laser walls in between the combatants. Okay, you, you boys need to talk it out. Okay, <laughs> use your words. Okay, you're, you're wrecking the whole power station. And you would think that Qui-Gon Jinn, being a Jedi diplomat, would try to talk his way out. But no, it's nope. just... Eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm, is not going to work in the podcast, but you guys have Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get you, sucker, says Qui-Gon Jinn. Uh, and then he starts just blatantly meditating all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Darth Maul's like, ew, what? Stop with your battle trance meditation. I'm going to dip my lightsaber into this laser wall I'm a, I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm not ashamed of my body, and I'm going to meditate wherever I want to. I mean, God made me in his own image. Why should I be afraid of my blood? <laughs> <coughs> but we d- diverge. <laughs> Um, yeah, then, oh, yes, it's on, like Donkey Kong. Qui-Gon's lightsaber ignites green, and it goes against the Christmas red, and uh, Qui-Gon is fighting Darth Maul. It's a fucking amazing fight. Kick flips, 180, ollies, all of it. Just just nose grinds. Triple Lutz. (coughs) Rails. Crane kick. (laughs) Hadouken! Triple Lutz. (laughs) 
hey, Qui-Gon, you, <laughs> you're great at fighting. Let me make you into a Sith, and we could fight each other forever. We'll be best pals. I'll be your master, and you can be my dark apprentice. Here, just sign this card. You'll notice we have good dental. <laughs> Qui-Gon looks down at the card and it says, gotcha, motherfucker. <laughs> and then just below the card, projecting from his tum-tum is the red hot dick of Darth Maul's lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> I get one. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no! Says Alec Guinness, Jr., uh, yeah, and, Obi-Wan comes flying in too late. Yeah, yeah. Qui-Gon's just potato sacked on the floor, clutching his guts. Oh, this hurts worse than anything I've ever experienced. I regret my decision to become a Jedi. Oh, <laughs> mama. Oh. Ugly crying. It's really undignified. Clutching at Obi-Wan as he tries to defend himself against Darth Maul. <laughs> Save me. Save me. I don't want to be a blue ghost. <laughs> But Darth Maul will not relent. He's got Maul of America all <laughs> over the place. And But you know what? Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's youthful vigor is uh, making quite a challenging combatant against Darth Maul. But you know what? Here's some fan theories. Uh, people are like, Obi-Wan's mad. That's the dark side. And so he, he he's like fighting real good because he's using the dark side now. But... Darth Maul recognizes that. He's like, game recognize game. And he channels it into a force boosh and pushes Ewan McGregor into another goddamn shaft. <laughs> You're goddamn right. So many shafts for poor little Obi. Yeah. And he's hanging on to like this um, prolapsed anus or whatever. <laughs> Guys, it, it gets dirtier the more desperate I am for time. Um, <clears throat> and Darth, that's a promise. Darth Maul's just like taunting him. Yeah, he's like, ha 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 ha, zorching the edge of the rim with his lightsaber. He kicks Obi Wan's sweet blue lightsaber down the shaft. No. How's he get, can he kill a man with his bare hands? How's a Jedi gonna get a lightsaber if it's no longer in his hand? <laughs> I don't know. The world may never know. We're about to find out. Oh! Ewan oh. <laughs> McGregor does a force leap off of the ice platform that he made by co super cooling the water molecules beneath his feet. Another Jedi trick that we haven't seen before. Ha-ha! <laughs> he Errol Flynn's straight over Darth Maul's head, confusing him because much like a dog, Darth Maul doesn't like looking up. <laughs> and he, using... Jedi concentration water form sixth power. <laughs> he bites through Darth Maul's entire torso using the blade strike with a sharp part of his hand. Oh, I am justly undone. Darth Maul says, split in twain by the raw power of Jedi's fingers. Lil Obi just gently cradling his now severed torso kisses him on the forehead. <laughs> says we could have been so much more <laughs> before gently laying him down and then slipping on the huge amount of blood flowing out. Hey, Dave, what's the blood look like? It looks a little bit like Jaloos. <laughs> Only 90s kids will get that. <laughs> it's my favorite word. Smash cut into the orbital blockade, and we see, oh, no, three-month-old Anakin Skywalker <laughs> just like... <laughs> Just slapping buttons. <laughs> He's thrown up all over himself. Aww. Just slapping whatever he can. I'll, I'll spin. That's a good trick. Whippy, he says. And, like, uh, is truly protected by the Lord above because he's gently lowered into the hangar <laughs> of... Uh, the droid control ship, the biggest, toughest ship, and a friggin' child got in there. Um, his well, he did spin at one point, he which did, he did, did establish. New barrel roll. That's a pretty cool move. <laughs> yeah. That's a good move. <laughs> I forget how Anakin was yeah. voiced again. Jimmy Stewart? I don't know. Yeah, I think he is. Is, is he a Jimmy not, Stewart? No, 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 no. This is pod racing. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> 
um, Anakin slams on the photon torpedo button, and it totally immolates the droid control brain. Oh, no, I was a sentient being. <laughs> Oh no, fire! Uh, me hate fire, says the one month old cave boy. <laughs> I, as a robot, shouldn't feel this, but it burns! Oh god, it burns! <laughs> Uh, Anakin somehow unflambes his ship and triumphantly flies out of the exploding bad guy ship. Da, 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 He's a child. Everyone cheers for this child who's murdered at least 50 people by now. <laughs> yeah, Dave pointed out to me earlier, there's droids on the ship, but there's also life forms. <laughs> yeah, they, they try to make it it, uh, no, there's there's people on there. There's there are people. <laughs> they were people, Anakin. <laughs> yeah. Um, just wait till part two with the Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> um, smash cut. Uh, the enemy army, just all the droids, just the start. Windows ninety five field. Yeah. Screensaver. Do 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 do. Oh, says Jar Jar Bane. Pushing one over, its head falls off. Why? Why are their heads like magnetically connected? They're all brokey. Jar Jar's so strong, he just proceeds to keep hitting the already deactivated <laughs> droids, telling people how strong he is. I will break you. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. <laughs> you merely adopted Naboo. <laughs> <laughs> Smash cut. Two. The city of Theed. Oh, it's a beautiful day for a funeral, everyone. And we see Qui-Gon Jinn has not ascended to the blue ghost realm. He's still a dead bag of meat. <coughs> Master, quiet. This is your own funeral. <coughs> Um, yes. No, no, don't, don't burn me. Quiet. <laughs> Obi-Wan turns on the heat. The hot, hot flames totally immolate Qui-Gon Jinn's body. And Yoda and Mace Windu watch on giggling and snickering to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good food. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Master Windu. Uh, they killed an evil Sith. Do you think it was the Master Sith? Or... One of the, uh, you know, employee Siths. Motherfucker is his entire response. Oh, boy, this guy, <laughs> the whole way here, <laughs> kicked all those snakes off the ship. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, while the two Jedi Masters, experts in the Force, readers of minds, uh, debate which of the Sith they killed, Chancellor... Palpatine stands right next to them, twiddling his bony fingers, looking at the burning body of Qui-Gon Jinn. <laughs> Sorry, I have allergies. <laughs> <laughs> his black pitch bubbles out of his mouth. <laughs> yep, an old Naboo tradition, allergy season. <clears throat> Um, yeah, everybody's real sad. Until Smash Cut! The next day, the Peace Parade! Woohoo! The Peace Parade is going! Chewbacca's there! Princess Leia puts a medal on him! Send home the war dinosaurs! Bring forth the bass drum dinosaurs! <laughs> yeah, a marching band of Gungans is playing and they're feeling themselves not sexually, just like, you know. You, you know what I mean. Some of them. <laughs> I'm polymorphically perverse. You saw those World War II pictures when the sailors got off the boat? Yeah. You think the them. Gungans are sucking on like a sea turtle? Yes. <laughs> That's what they call it. <laughs> and just behind them are the three Naboo soldiers who survived. And, uh, of course... Obi-Wan Kenobi, now a Jedi master, probably, and the preemie baby swaddled in his arms, Anakin Skywalker, wearing a, a cute little a baby bib that says, when I grow up, I'm going to be the greatest enemy the galaxy has ever known. On the back of his little onesie, there's 50 hash marks that no one wants to talk about. <laughs> 
Goo. <laughs> and Boss Nass, the biggest Gungan in existence, who exists now, gets the uh, static electricity orb from Spencer's gifts, holds that plasma ball high in the sky, and yells, Peace! <laughs> Out! <laughs> Smashing it on the ground. Bitch! <laughs> this has been Muffed Movies! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We are heroes. Thank you so much for coming out to Muffed Movies. I've been Mark Soloff. Dave Stacko. You've been you. Thank you so much. This means the world to me. You've been awesome. If you liked uh, what you saw and you had a good time tonight, please consider becoming a patron of my show. Thank you, everybody. Um, good night. Woo! Don't forget your silly sippers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Muff Movies first ever Pretty Good Awards. This is the award show where we take old Muff Movies clips that are pretty good and we air them again so you can enjoy them once again and then I talk in between them to give you some context. I'm Mark Soloff and you know that. So let's get down to business. The award categories this year are the most pretty good song, the most pretty good crowd scene, and the most pretty good time we cracked ourselves up while recording an episode of Muff Movies. Now, these awards are drawing from a pool of Muff Movies stretching all the way back to 2014 is uh, the oldest award winner that we have here for you today. But I digress. The first category is... Most Pretty Good Song. Now, we have a runner-up for Most Pretty Good Song, and it comes from the Save the Lost Dance episode from November of 2016. The song I sing about the women's restroom is okay, um, but what follows it is pretty good and um, a little embarrassing for me to hear myself say. Anyway, <laughs> enjoy. Where the fuck are we? We're at school. In the women's bathroom. Oh, the women's restroom. Oh, man, there's a crack hoe. Okay? And she... <laughs> what? <laughs> I hope you start the episode with you saying that. <laughs> Just the way that your eyes kind of bugged out of your head. <laughs> and you delivered the line like you're... Narrating a Dickens novel. <laughs> uh, uh, <huh>. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, uh. sorry, I was incorrect. <laughs> that was our runner-up from Save the Lost Dance. Uh, and now, the winner of the Pretty Good Award for Pretty Good Song is Top Gub from March of 2015. I don't think any explanation is needed. Hey guys, keep it muffed and put it in your stuff. No! <laughs> I'm not going to let you have the last word anymore if that's how you're going to say fuck <laughs> off to you until you get it in my red hot anal zone. The less I can think of, the more I talk about a fucking shit and bone. Wow! <laughs> the last refuge of a scoundrel is a fuck song about their own butt. <laughs> The Last Refuge of a Scoundrel is a fuck song about their own butt. Thank you, Andy, for those timeless words. And now we move right along into one of my favorite categories, the most pretty good crowd scene. Um, this is a thing that we like to do sometimes on Muff Movies, in crowd scenes that we're reenacting where people are just yelling out at the speaker constantly, inappropriate things, dirty things, uh, wacky things happen with the crowd. Usually violence breaks out. Um... And they're all pretty good, uh, but these are some of the most pretty good crowd scenes. Our runner-up uh, for, for this year is um, from Muff Movies Live, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, uh, which happened in summer of 2023. Um, to set the scene, 
Cedric Diggory has been killed and Dumbledore is addressing all the Hogwarts students um, for a, a wake or funeral service. And that is where we get our crowd from. I, I really enjoyed this ending to the episode and I hope you do too. Well, students, your parents and the Ministry of Magic don't want me to tell you this, but the Lord Voldemort has returned to this earth. We know. Anyway, <laughs> quiet down, Minerva. And uh, uh, Voldemort is incredibly powerful, and he killed Cedric Diggory, a boy who was just a really, really fierce friend. And I mean fierce in the drag race sense. He could, he could eat and leave no crumbs, hunty. A, a girl stands up. Um, I have something to confess. Yes. Cedric took my virginity. <laughs> Suddenly, all these my, different... My virginity, too. He my took virgin- my, virginity my virginity as well. My virginity. Victor Crumb stands up. He took my virginity. He took my virginity. <laughs> He took me virginity, he did. Hagrid, you too. Oh, and yes. they all start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Buckbeak flies by overhead and insinuates that its virginity was also taken by Cedric. Ah, uh, poor Cedric Diggory. Uh, a cool thing about the Goblet of Fire um, live episode is that we did Goblet of Ma years years before in the muff chamber and so it's like you can get the same sequence of events with different jokes and different voices and different goofs um and that was kind of uh, an illustration to me of how you can do a live muff movies of a movie that you've already muffed and it's still good it's still funny and different um so weirdly evergreen these old movies anyway that was the runner-up for most pretty good crowd scene. But of course, the winner for most pretty good crowd scene is the crowd scene that started it all. Uh, it's from The NeverEnding Story in August of 2015. Uh, Andy North was my guest host on this, and we just uh, started a lot of goofs, um, which are uh, have some of the same comedy DNA as the Super Ego podcast. If you ever check them out, they were a big influence on Andy and me. Um, But yeah, asking the speaker to take off their top, um, violence, uh, all sorts of crazy shit. Um, Yeah, this one's a little bit longer, so sit back and enjoy. The Empress is a vizier and courtesan comes out with his old white beard and his white robes. Attention, our freaks from around the kingdom. Speak up. Attention, freaks from around the kingdom! Take off your top, Chancellor! Uh, you don't want to see this. No, we don't. <laughs> I am... I am Chancellor McCancellor. Down in front. What? Down in front. Shut up, other Chancellor. Take off your top, uh, Chancellor. God fucking damn it, every time. <laughs> Security, can we get this guy out of here? Yeah, I'll get him. Ah, oh, he's got an IUD! <laughs> Security tackles the other chancellor and pulls the IUD out of his Eutarian flapes. <laughs> <Go! laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anyway, hey, everybody. Uh, great to be back in town. Look, there's just a few things I want to mention. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Number one. What's the deal with bad people? <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Number two, the nothing. Am I right? My grandpa died from the nothing. So your grandpa's still alive? No. This is a similar problem to the one Odysseus had in the Odyssey. Ah, finally, we're catching wise, says Homer. (laughs) From his magical book back in ancient Greece? Oh, dear. Ancient Greece. Yeah. Let's make it Greece. Sure. He's He's from the Homerian times. I'm from the Homerian times. (laughs) We zoom in on Homer's scroll, back into the never-ending scrolly. So, as I was saying, the nothing is very bad. Where's the childlike empress? We want to talk to her. Well, you're not gonna, because she's real sick. What? Because of the nothing, apparently. But the nothing's miles away. That's weird. Does she have allergies? I think maybe she and the nothing have a psychic link going on. I have hay fever. Quiet you, no coward. Anyway, you remember how in Harry Potter... I've got goyle fever. <laughs> be, be quiet. Um, 
Arliss. <laughs> What's his fucking name? Quiet, Knox. You remember how Voldemort and Harry Potter were linked? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Chancellor looks in a mirror and sees his burnt side of his face. He flips a, a two-sided coin. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the nothing is really fucking her up. We need a warrior. It seems silly that, like, we should worry about a single person dying because it's linked to, like, an Armageddon thing. You know what I mean? It seems like if we're all going to die, why should we be worried about her dying as well? That's a really good point. I mean, if the nothing takes over. Holy shit, what are you? <laughs> I'm a rock biter. Oh, boy. Hey. Don't let him near me, says a rock. <laughs> I don't bite rocks like you, you dirty quartz hey is that are we racist? just gonna let him say that <laughs> no one has a problem with that <laughs> it's it's true he is kind of a dirty quartz holy shit what's that i'm kind of a troll thing oh god uh, wait uh, fuck off <laughs> a fight breaks out security <laughs> breaks it up anyway if i could finish my set real quick i'm just trying to say that a warrior has been called upon he's the greatest warrior in the world he's gonna stop the nothing he's the last hope so without any further ado Let's call to the stage, Atreyu! Everybody starts preemptively clapping for the great hero, expecting, like, a Conan the Barbarian-type muscle man to leap to the stage. Yeah, Atreyu! At a certain point, everyone stops clapping and looks around in confusion. The, a little boy seems to have bum-rubbed bum rub the stage. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's everybody. Got, he's got worms. <laughs> I was just bum rubbing. Did you introduce me already? Excuse me, young man. I'm waiting for a warrior named Atreyu. Yeah, that's me, Atreyu, the warrior prince. What? You're a little boy. Yeah, I may be a little boy, but I got a dick the size of this gat. You're lucky I'm not a cockbiter. What? What? Co what? Cock. <laughs> cockbiter. No, I understood that. What are you saying? Are you saying you'd eat my dick? I'm a little kid. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? You said your cock is huge. Yeah, but I was just like, it's okay for me to say it. I'm not, I didn't say your How cock How old is are you? Are you like a grown up? I'm as old as the mountain. That's fucked up of you to say that about eating the kid's dick. I'm, look, I'm not going to suck your dick. I'm just going to eat it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Security! <laughs> <laughs> Security jumps on the rock biter. They wrestle him to the ground. And Legalize it. <laughs> ah, legalize it and the cock biter. <laughs> Two famous things that uh, go well together. Um, now we are going to move right along to uh, our final and my favorite category. Most pretty good times. We cracked ourselves up during a recording of Muff Movies. Um, now we have two runners up in this category because we crack ourselves up a lot because that's what Muff Movies is about over here. Um, so our first runner up is from the uh, Muff Movies Two Towers episode. It features Sophie Schrand and Dave Stecco as our special guest hosts. Um, yeah, we just cracked ourselves up. Um, so again, Two Towers recorded back in May of 2016. Give her a listen and let it glisten. Ugh. Smash cut! <laughs> to the outside of Helm's Deep. Hi. <laughs> Why, that's no orcorn. <laughs> it's that huge guy choking on a chicken bone. Somebody help him. Help. Oh, he's a god. <laughs> oh, I love that clip. I especially love that Dave's totally bonkers orc horde sound that he does it twice. He realizes like, oh, this is pretty silly. And then he, he doubles down. He does it a third time. That That's awesome. That's commitment right there. Uh, <laughs> um, now we have another runner up in this category. And uh, this is a somewhat legendary moment if, in Muff Movies history. As you know, Andy North and I have a, a funny relationship where um, it seems like we're always trying to push each other's buttons. Um, this one comes from the Silence of the Lambs episode, <laughs> which came out in October of 2014. 
Um, yeah, I say a very special word in a, a quite unusual way, and uh, it cracks Andy up. And uh, I hope it cracks you up, too. Enjoy. Uh, with a casual disdain for the rube-like possessions that young Miss Bimmel had, Clarice is throwing the shit out of all of them. She rips the backing out of a little ballerina noise box, music box, and sees indecent Polaroids of the Bimmel girl dressed only in her bra and panties. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You really leaned into that. She word. can see how roomy the girl was, skin wise. Listener, wink. I wish that you could have seen the expression that Mark Soloff just made as he wound up, as he gathered his strength to say the word panties, and his mouth split open into the most delighted grin I've seen him show all day. How would you describe my how I wound myself up? Uh, you took like a deep breath. Uh -huh. Your body like tensed into like a, a relaxation. A snake-like coil. Sort of like almost you were about to do some kung fu where you need to keep yourself loose, but you're tensing every muscle. All of your training has led to this moment. Right, taut but relaxed. Mm -hmm. Like crane position, and then you just kicked out with the word panties. Panties. <laughs> and you swept my leg out from under me, and I'm dead. You're dead. I can kill with a word. Sorry, listener. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Anyway, oh man, Silence of the Lambs is such a good episode. If you haven't heard it before, check it out. Um, Andy's Dr. Chilton is sort of the proto-pervert uh, character that has really blossomed um, and come into his own. Um, mm, yeah, uh, so uh, we can't hold this off any longer. It is um, the final a uh, pretty good award. The winner of the pretty good award for most pretty good time we cracked ourselves up while recording an episode of Muff Movies goes to Jaws from back in December of 2014. Um, it's the very ending of the episode. Uh, I love this moment. You can hear why I love this moment in just a second. Um, it's it's such a fun way to end an episode and. <laughs> Um, I, I was going off the rails. I think I, it was just a non sequitur and it made me laugh so much that I was gasping. I was literally gasping for air to try to finish the show and do the outro stuff. Um, every time I listen to this, I laugh. I hope you think it's as funny as I do. Cause I thought it was pretty fucking funny. Anyway, um, enjoy our final clip <laughs> from Jaws, December, 2014. We did it, boys! <laughs> we sure did! You know what, Brody? Maybe you're not half bad. Wait. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to have like an unearned emotional moment with me right now. <laughs> the naiad puts a wreath of flowers on Brody's neck. Welcome to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! <laughs> this has been Muffed Movies! <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> if you like what you heard, and how could you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for that solid 45 minutes of fun. Oh. If you uh, if you like muffed movies, uh, be sure to rate, review, blaster podcast. <laughs> Keep listening to that, Andy. Yeah. Do you have anything to plug? I have something to plug that lasts for twelve days. Is it Hanukkah? No. How well, many? I mean, yeah, actually. How many days of Hanukkah? Eight. Eight days of Hanukkah. Twelve days of Christmas. What? What? I just plug in Christmas. Have a good Christmas, everybody. Second. I've never seen a man look more bewildered <laughs> at another man telling people to have a happy Christmas. I don't think you're allowed to say that anymore, Andy. Why not? Because of <clears throat> Al-Qaeda. <laughs> They've already won. Is that what the war on Christmas was? Yeah, they won. Oh, boy. Thanks, Obama. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for having a Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> I hope you get a bigger boat of presents. <laughs> <laughs> Just terrible from beginning to end. <laughs> Jaws White. <clears throat> Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs>